Hey guys, what is up? My name is Nicholas Seo and I'm currently a core anesthetic trainee working in the NHS. Now, it's only less than a year ago where I sat for my interviews as a foundation doctor for my specialty applications. And at that time, no one really told me how to go about studying or preparing for my interviews and I ended up wasting lots of unnecessary time trying to figure out the best approach in preparing for my interviews. And that is why today, I'll be presenting you guys with my four step guide on how to prepare for interviews, free of charge of course. And I promise you that this will be quick, concise and great value for your time. At the end of the day, my job is to convince you that cooking and preparing for your interviews are much more similar than you think. Preparing for an interview is like serving a dish in a five star restaurant where you are the chef and your customers are your interviewers. It requires time an effort to plan, structure, and deliver your answers. And that's why I would recommend personally at least one week's worth of preparation prior to your interview date to be able to successfully prepare for it. I've created the acronym PUX as a guide to help you step-by-step step in the preparation of your interviews. It might not make any sense now, but I promise you at the end of this video, you'll see how it all links together. Let's talk about step one, preparing your ingredients. You can never prepare your five-star dish if you don't have the right ingredients for it. This step basically refers to knowing your portfolio inside out. Now, this is the most important step in your interview preparation because this involves you brainstorming to extract important points and information out of your portfolio to be able to effectively gain building blocks to construct and also to squeeze in value in your answers when presented to interviewers in a short amount of time. And to help you with brainstorming, I've come up with three core areas to think about. Firstly, commitment to specialty. Secondly, audit, QI, teaching and research. And lastly, your qualifications and experience and also extracurricular activities. Under commitment to specialty, you want to know more about your training program of interest. Let's say you're applying for internal medicine training program. You'll want to know more about what the program consists of, what is required of you to complete training. Now I've been to multiple specialty interviews and there will always, always be a question about your training program. Sometimes interviewers would also ask you more about your career plan. For example, for me, I have an interest in simulation training, pre-hospital emergency medicine, and also medical education. Having these additional interests in place or a career plan in place lets the interviewers know that you have done your due diligence in researching about your career and also have some sort of rough plan towards the future. And lastly, if you have any courses, taster days, electives, or even experience in working with your specialty of choice, do take note of all of these because it provides evidence towards your interest in specialty applications. Next, you would like to take note of any teaching courses you've attended, any teaching roles that you have experience with, for example, a tutorship role or a supervisory role. You'd also want to dig up evidence on any research, audits, or QI projects that you've done in the past. Most interviewers would like you to tap into a teaching experience or an experience in quality improvement. Now, it's really important for you to pick and to be able to describe an experience in great detail. So quality beats quantity here, as talking about one single experience lets the interviewers know that you're capable of understanding and also carrying out a research or teaching session by yourself rather than you just listing your achievements. Lastly, you would like to take note of any additional degrees that you have. It could be an undergraduate integrated degree that you have taken in medical school or a postgraduate certificate in medical education. Also take note of any prizes or medals that you have won in medical school or outside of medical school or during your foundation years as a doctor, as it not only shows that you're keen in developing yourself, but also your work has been recognized. And lastly, any leadership positions such as being in a junior doctor's committee in a BMA or a president in a society in medical school helps you to remain competitive. Now that you have prepared your ingredients, it's time to move on to step two, which is using the right tools 
just like in cooking, you need to use the right tools to cook your food. You can't use a fork to cut your meat. It's basically not that efficient. There are ways to structure your answers to be able to give a holistic and comprehensive response to an interview question. Let's start off with clinical scenarios. In every interview, there's always a clinically related scenario where the interviewers are trying to test your ability to manage an acutely unwell patient. I personally still feel that the ABCD approach is the most comprehensive way in dealing with an acutely unwell patient. Let's start off with airway. You want to see or know that the patient's airway is patent. Are they talking to you? Do you hear any additional sounds such as snoring or gurgling? Have a look at their face to see if there's any foreign bodies present in the mouth or any obvious facial deformities that might possibly compromise airway. Also, if you're suspecting that your patient has a C-spine injury, the patient might need immobilization as appropriate before scanning. After you're satisfied with airway, let's move on to breathing. B for breathing. You want to know your patient's respiratory rate or oxygen saturations too through a pulse oximetry. You would also want to have a listen into their chest to see if there's any additional sounds and also have a look and feel at the trachea to see if it's deviated. Other questions to ask yourself during the assessment of B is also how's the work of breathing? Do they need supplemental oxygen and do they need additional scans such as a chest x-ray? to figure out what's going on. After B, we move on to C, C for circulation. Some of the parameters that you would like to know in C are things like blood pressure, your patient's heart rate, capillary review time, and also a 12 lead ECG if there's any abnormalities in the heart. You wanna gain IV access if not already done, large ball cannula if needed, and you can give and take things from the IV cannula. You can give things like fluids, antibiotics, and also blood products. You can take blood for sampling, such as gas sampling, group and cross matches, and laboratory investigations. Other questions you can ask yourself and see, does the patient need additional scans? For example, if you're thinking he's bleeding, does he need a fast scan or an additional CT scan? Do you need additional support for closer monitoring, such as a central venous catheter or also an arterial line for blood pressure management. I'm going to run D for disability and exposure together. So in under disability, you want to note your patient's GCS score, see if the pupils are equal and reactive, any outstanding drug allergies in your patients and also medic any medications they're on. You also want to know your patient's glucose, if they're high or low, in exposure, if not already done, an abdominal examination might be warranted in your patient. You want to look for any rashes for completeness and also your patient's temperature. This is also a really important tip, but at any point of time during your assessment, if you feel like you need additional help or senior help, don't be afraid to state it, all right? Calling for additional or senior help is not an indication of weakness, but it allows to show the examiners that you know the limits of your practice and you know when to call for help. The examiners want to know that you're not only able to make independent decisions by yourself for patient management, but also to realize your limits of your competency and to be able to call for help and support if needed. Now, sometimes after your clinical management, the examiner would like you to hand over this patient to your colleague, the S bar approach for handover is quite effective in dealing with this question. Let's take a topic pregnancy for example. In situation, I would say, this is a 21-year-old lady with a probable diagnosis of ectopic pregnancy and requires close monitoring. B for background, she's initially presented to A&E with increasing crampy left iliac fossa pain and now radiating to shoulder with nausea and vomiting with a positive pregnancy test and has no outstanding comorbidities. Assessment, you would say, on my ATE assessment, she's currently on a 15 liter non rebreather mask. IV access has been gained, fluids are running, blood pressure is otherwise stable, and bloods have been sent off for cross matching and routine investigations, including a HCG. She's currently a GCS of 15 out of 15 and have some opioids were given for pain relief. A referral has been made to the gynecology team and they will be down to see her shortly. Lastly, for recommendation, 
Would you be able to chase the laboratory results when you're back and make sure that the gynecology team sees her as soon as possible as I'm concerned that the ectopic pregnancy could be ruptured and she might become unstable really soon. That's how you do a quick S bar handover. Now let's move on to portfolio related questions. There are also structured ways in presenting your answers for portfolio related questions and situational related questions. Most interviewers like to start off with an open question such as, tell me more about your CV or tell me more about your training up to date. Now this is a trick question because if you start rambling anything and everything about your CV, you will not outshine other candidates. A good candidate will always be able to relate their CV achievements in relation to their specialty of choice. The CAMP acronym is the best way to start structuring your answers. I have color coded an example of how I prepared my answer so that you guys can have a better picture of how I prepared for my CB related answers for my anesthesia applications. You can pause the video at any time to have a read because I don't really want to waste your time. CAMP basically stands for Clinical, Academic, Management and Personal. Now the STAR and SPICE acronym are also good at answering situational questions. For example, if an interviewer asks you about your teaching experience, you can start off by explaining a situation or an event of your most outstanding teaching experience. You wanna tell them, what did you do? How do you do it? What have you learned from it? Similarly, if an interviewer throws you a scenario related question and want to know more about your thought process of dealing with a certain scenario, the SPICE acronym can be used to structuring your answer. This example I'm giving is for penicillin allergy. Now that you have learned how to structure your interview answers, it's now time to cook and refine your dish. Just like any cooking recipe, you might not get it right the first time and it can only get better with more refinement and repetition. If you really want to score well in an interview, it's not all about regurgitating a set or a structured answer. It's all about you selling your personal story your experiences, your weaknesses, and also your strength. So once you've structured your answer, practice and read it out loud. Now, the first thing I want you to ask yourself when practicing all these questions and answers is that, do you feel that your answer that you've given is personalized and unique? For every scenario and every situation that an interviewer is gonna throw onto you or any other interviewees, Everyone's gonna say the same set of answers, but do you have a personalized experience or a reflection that you had in the past to add your personal touch to it that can actually differentiate you with the rest? The next thing I want you guys to focus on is communication. Thanks to COVID, most interviews are going online now, and online is harder to convey your enthusiasm and feelings because you're not in the flesh and you're basically talking to a camera during your interviews. So my tip for you is try recording yourself on camera, see and listen to your tone of voice in your body language and see how it can actually improve in conveying the right message to your interviewers. Lastly, I want you guys to be flexible. Don't be going about learning answers to specific questions, but rather develop an overall good knowledge on certain topics, which will allow you to answer a right variety of questions. For example, an examiner can ask you many ways on a CV related questions. For example, tell me more about your CV. Tell me about your proudest achievement. Tell me about your training up to date. What in your CV has made you more suitable for your specialty of choice? So these are all different questions but asking for the same answer. And you want to have an answer which can answer all these questions instead of a specific answer for each specific question. So the last step to my guide for interview preparations is to serve your dish. You won't know how good your dish tastes like unless you have feedback. So taste the dish yourself or have others taste it for you. Have a friend that you can practice your interview questions and answers on because they will be able to pick up some body language or bad habits that you can improve on. In my case, I loved to use filler words such as uh or uh in between answering my questions and this really destroys the fluency and the professionalism on the way I answered my questions. Another bad habit I was was I kept moving my chair left and right when answering the questions so I had to buy a chair or get a chair which didn't move 
for my interview so I wouldn't be able to do that. And my last tip is to smile, be nice, dress well for your interview because your first impression goes a long way. All right guys, that's all I have to share about my top tips for interview preparation. I hope you guys enjoyed yourself and found this video useful and I hope I have convinced you that there are similarities between cooking and preparation for interview. If you like what I do, please give a like and subscribe. If not, all the best for your interviews and I'll see you guys next time.